Hi, I'm Brian Van from SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're going to install the Spiegler Rensport stainless steel brake line kit on the front of our 2014 STG Road Racing World Honda CBR1000RR project bike. Spiegler brake lines are our most popular brake line here at STG. I've been using these on my bikes for years. Tremendous quality design, and one of the things that makes these so popular is all the color options. You'll know for our Honda, I decided to go a little bold. We're going to go with yellow lined and red fittings. Remember, all the Spiegler brake lines are DOT certified. They're going to be perfect for racing applications as well as street bike application considering that DOT certification. Stainless steel braided brake lines, aluminum fittings, and we also add in colored aluminum banjo bolts to go with the fitting. Same color as the fitting. It's going to look phenomenal on the motorcycle. With the Spiegler brake lines, you are able to rotate the fitting. They give you a tool kit. You use it with a vise or a big pair of channel locks. And I'll show you how to do that. You can really get these things to line up just right on your motorcycle. Let's talk about tools. This is, at the end of the day, a very basic job. The most difficult thing is probably bleeding the brakes, which we're going to cover at the end of this video. So all you need is some hand tools. Right? I got three wrenches here, a 12, a 14, and an 8. I've got a T-handle, a screwdriver, I've got my power brake bleeder. I'm going to use that just to evacuate the braking system on the bike so I get a nice dripless install. If you don't have that to suck all the fluid out of the system, right? What you can use like a turkey baster right up on your master cylinder to empty that which is nice because it gets most of the fluid out of the master right but be ready to clean the brake fluid because remember this stuff is nasty you get it on the painted surfaces and it can make a mess so be ready with rags i've got brake cleaner and then some type of cleaner as well remember brake fluid is water soluble so it cleans up real easy just don't let it sit on the painted surface We've got a brand new bottle of Motul RBF 600 brake fluid. And then, when I bleed the brakes, I'm going to use the manual method on this bike, okay? And we're going to use the Speed Bleeder bag and hose kit. And what's sweet about this is it leaves no mess. You can use this thing over and over again. You can actually empty the fluid from it. You can see it's got a nice little cap on it. Every person who services their own brakes on their motorcycle should have this. It only costs a few bucks and it makes for a really clean job. Okay, we're gonna open up by removing the brake lines from the bike. The first thing we've gotta do is this still has the uh, safety catch here up on the fluid reservoir. You go ahead and take that screw out so we can get the cap off. Let's go ahead and pull the cap. And then we're going to evacuate all the brake fluid from the brake fluid reservoir using my power bleeder. Remember, if you don't have this, a good substitute here would be turkey baster. Go ahead and come down to the brake bleeder screws. just right this whole process will be really really clean see the fluid flowing out and actually hear the air going through the reservoir on top when we come back I will have already done the other side and we're going to go ahead and begin removing our brake all right, I've got the system emptied. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the brake lines from the motorcycle. We're gonna start right up here at the top with our master cylinder. What I like to do is basically have a rag in my hand ready to catch any possible remaining fluid. Usually you'll get just a couple of drops out of it, even after emptying it like we did. 
You will not be reusing any of the banjo bolts or the crush washers. This kit comes complete with all new banjos and crush washers. So all this stuff essentially will be discarded. I'm going to leave a rag up here in this area to just catch anything that might drip from the master for the time being. And then we will come down here and basically do the same thing with each one of the calipers. I already have the mounting points removed from the two fenders, right? So all that we need to do now is loosen up the caliper banjos using the same process. And then we have one mounting point up here that is going to use an 8 millimeter fastener from the factory. Right, and that mounts essentially to the triple tree. I'm going to go ahead and pull that off really quick. And then we'll be ready to remove the lines from the calipers. Save this fastener, or slightly reuse it. Let's come down here. Pull that one loose. Pull it through like so. It drops down. Come to the other side. And then this brake line is going to be ready to remove. After you've done this, especially on your street bike, I want you to go around and make sure that you have not gotten any brake fluid on any of the painted surfaces. If you see any of it, you're going to want to take care of that immediately. Do not let it sit on the bike for any period of time. And there you go. The line is removed. Okay, we're ready to install now. I've got the stock line off. The first thing that I'm going to want to do here is actually get this line hooked up to the master cylinder, right? I'm not going to tighten anything up. I want to get it hooked up. I want to route these lines and see if I need to rotate any of these fittings to get that perfectly clean installation. Another note I want to make here. Stock motorcycle, street bike, it's going to come with this brake light switch. Bolts to the bottom of the master cylinder. It really gets in the way and it clutters it up down here. It can restrict how much you're able to turn the master cylinder down to improve the actual angle of the levers. So for this application, I'm removing that. I will secure these wires to the side of the harness with some tape after the fact. Routing the line. I'm going to start off just lightly threading in this banjo bolt here at the master cylinder and then verify whether or not any of the fittings need to be rotated. Spiegler has the ability to do that, and hopefully on this kit we have to do that a little bit so we can show you what it takes to make that happen. I'm going to thread that down a little bit. I want to be cognizant of the mount over here. Okay, that looks good. This fitting uh, is going to be turned down, and I really don't like that because it looks like it's going to get in the way of the the actual brake pad pin, you know, replacing the brake pads is something pretty important on a race bike. I don't want to have to take that off every time I do this. So I'm going to rotate that fit. Uh, let's come to the other side. This one uh, is exactly where I would want it to be, so we're going to have a good clean installation there. So, looking at this one, at the end of the day, I, I really need to take this 180 degree, degrees, which is easy to do. When we come back, I'm going to have this thing in the vise and show you how to rotate the line. Okay, each one of the Spiegler line kits comes with the tools that you need to rotate the fittings on the line itself. We have these two blue clamping tools, okay? What you're going to do, I have a vise, I'm going to use it. If you don't have a vise, you can use a big pair of channel locks to hold this. What I need to do is get these over the ferrule for the line, like so. The most important thing is that you have good, even clamping force, and that's why a vise is really the best way to do this. If you don't have it, you can do it, like I said, with channel locks. I have done it that way before, but have found that without a doubt, the vise is the most effective method. I'm going to go ahead and get that ferrule in there, and remember, we're looking for 180 degrees out of this. 
So what I want to do is I want to start the line off square in relationship to the vise, so I know how far to go. And then I'm going to crank that bad boy down. Part of the toolkit it comes with is this plastic piece. It slides right through the fitting. And you can see there's definitely some resistance there. And I'm going to rotate that bad boy around 180 degrees. That simple. We'll go back over to the bike and get the line kit installed. Okay, I have already installed the banjo bolt up here at the master cylinder. You'll know I have left it loose. And I'm gonna do that with each of the three banjo bolts. I'm not gonna tighten anything up until everything is lined up just right. Now remember, banjo bolt, crush washer, and pass it through the fitting. Follow up with another crush washer. And then we're gonna go ahead and thread it into our caliper, like so. And we will repeat the process on the other side. We also have a mounting point right here on the trickle tree that we need to consider as we go through this. I'll show you how we're going to deal with that in just a minute. So that's a lot better now. I've got full access to those brake pad pins, which is key. Race bike, we're going to be changing pads all the time. And over to the other side. Banjo bolt crush washer fitting, and then of course the remaining crush washer. I can thread that bad boy in there. Like so. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the mounting point here. Spiegler supplies a little bracket, just thin gauge steel with some rubber around it. Go ahead and collapse that over here. You know, I know instinctively you think to yourself, you know, I really want to rotate this and line it up with that boss, right? Which is going to put a twist like this in the line kit. No, you don't want to do that. What I want you to do is I want you to let the line relax naturally. You don't want to put any kinks in it if you can avoid it at all. So I'm going to let that line relax. And then you'll see the bracket will end up at an angle right here on the bike in relation to that lower triple clamp. Okay, and that's alright because the bracket is thin and it will easily bend to conform to the shape of the boss on uh, that lower triple clamp like so. so get that on there. Nice clean angle. Put some torque to it. You see how good this looks already. 14 millimeter wrench is what I'm going to use to tighten up each of the banjo bolts. All aluminum here. Okay, we've got aluminum fittings, aluminum banjos. You do not need to go wild on these. Put a reasonable amount of torque and then stop. Do not over tighten these. They're lightweight. And I'll tighten up this one when we come back. We are going to be bleeding our front brakes. Okay, I filled the brake fluid reservoir. We're going to leave the cap off. Start off with a brand new bottle of Motul RVF 600. I have hooked up to this caliper the speed bleeder bag and hose kit. The first thing that we need to do is, is we need to get some fluid moving in this. Remember, we emptied this system completely, so it's going to take a couple of minutes to get the fluid to flow. There's a few different ways you could do that, right? You could begin with the gravity bleed process, okay? Opening one of the caliper bleeder screws down here and just waiting for the fluid to start to move. All right, you see it's already starting to come down, which is kind of nice. All right, you see a little bit of fluid moving into that hose. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and close that screw. I'm going to come up here, open the screw, push, close the screw. Open the screw, push and hold, close the screw. I'm going to repeat that process. We just want to get some fluid moving here. A lot of air in the system. We 
we've got three circuits that we're going to be bleeding on the front of this motorcycle. Each caliper, and then of course we have a screw on the master cylinder. I'll stop here. I'm going to come over to the other side, repeat the same process. just to keep getting that fluid flowing. See, we've got a little motion there. A lot of air in there still. You can actually see the air bubbles come out with this speed bleeder bag and hose kit because the hose that hooks to the bleeder screw is clear. You want to be cognizant at all times of the fluid level in that master cylinder. If it runs out, you're going to completely fill the system with air and you'll have to begin this whole tedious process all over again. Go ahead and tighten that screw up. Pull that off. Not a bad idea to have a rag handy wipe off the top of the bleeder shoes. Now I'm going to refill the uh, fluid level in the master. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and bleed this master cylinder bleeder screw and begin to remove the air from that. Okay, we've got fluid moving at both of the caliper bleeder screws. Now we're going to come up to our master cylinder. This light has a bleeder screw up here on the master. I'm going to repeat the process here, kind of drape that line over a little bit. And you want to, you want to keep your eye on this. You don't want this thing popping off in the middle of the process, right? So open the screw, squeeze the lever, close the screw. Open the screw, squeeze the lever, hold, close the screw. See, we've got a little bit of air coming out of there yet. Starting to get a little bit of a lever now. Pump it a couple times, hold it. Less and less air each time. Levers start to firm up quite a bit. Okay, now we're going to switch and go down to our calipers and repeat that very same process that we're using up here at the master. Before we do that, we're going to need to top the master cylinder off so we don't run into a low fluid situation and introduce a bunch of air into the system. Get that topped off nicely. Come back over to the other side. Get this over our bleeder screw. Set the bag up here so we have a lot less tension on the actual line itself. Pump it up, holding the lever, open the screw, close the screw, pump the lever, hold it, open the screw, repeat that process to get a little cleaner fluid flow. You can see the air is for the most part evacuated from this circuit. Good. Uh, that was nice and clean. We're going to go one more time here. Okay, tighten the screw. We've got this circuit done. Pull it off slowly. Let the fluid dry. 
drain down onto the back. More to the other side. And repeat that process. I realize this is a little bit like watching paint dry, but it's also really important that you get this right. Same situation. I'm going to go ahead and pump the lever a couple times, hold it, open the screw. See, we definitely had some air in the circuit. And that's clearing up real nicely. Yeah, now we've got a nice lever. Kind of some of that brake fluid level. Hit this circuit one more time. Looks good. Down. I'm going to finish this by coming up to the master cylinder and going after the circuit twice more. So I've got plenty of fluid in there. Pump the lever up. I've got a pretty solid lever right now. Uh, there's no air in there. And that's it. We have air free. Brake circuit. Pull that off slowly so we don't get a bunch of spillage. Okay, look at that. How sweet is that thing, huh? And it is super cheap. It keeps this job nice and clean. So notice I got a little bit of fluid up here. Paint cover. Get that off. All of that. Okay, now we need to top off our fluid, cap the system, get right to the former right there. Let's get our cap nice and clean. Spray it off. Make sure we have no debris. show you this trick that I use. It's super simple. It takes two zip ties. You leave it overnight or when you're trailing your bike to a racetrack and you plug your brakes before you go, you do this and when you get there, you'll definitely have no air in your brake system. Okay, the lines are completely installed. We've got the system bled. I've got the master cylinder topped off. We've got the cap on. We're done, right? Not quite yet. We need to make sure we don't have any leaks in the system. I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to help you leak check it and it's going to also help ensure that every minute air bubble has been evacuated from the system and all it's going to take is two zip ties. What we're going to do is we're going to connect these zip ties together. If you happen to have one long zip tie, guess what? It's only going to take one zip tie. We're going to wrap it around this lever and we're going to use the zip tie to essentially hold that lever in a compressed state and I'm going to let it sit for quite a while. By having the circuit right compressed, it allows any air that might be in the system to literally, you're using gravity, it's going to simply bubble up to the top, happen all inside the master cylinder, it works great. The other thing this is going to do, we're going to leave this hooked up like this for a while. I'm going to come back and I'm going to make sure none of my fittings have any drips. Remember, it's really important that these brakes are fully functional. It is a key safety item. So this leak check is something you absolutely have to do. Another thing you need to do is we need to rotate the bars back and forth. Obviously can't do that here on the table, but you bet I'll do it before I ride it. Rotate them back and forth and make sure that we don't have any binding anywhere on the motorcycle. Final thing I want you to look for is make sure you've got adequate slack in the lines to allow for the forks to fully extend, okay? It does happen, maybe when you're doing a wheelie, maybe you go over a little rise in the front end and loads, the forks fully extend. If you don't have enough line there to allow that to happen, it's gonna pull on the line, could cause a brake failure, and that would not be pleasant. So there you have it. Hopefully this helps you with your project. 
Brian Van just installed the Spiegler Rensport brake line kit on the front of our 2014 STG Road Racing World Honda CBR 1000RR.